Okay, here we are back again with more Dragon Age Inquisition. We're playing Trespasser DLC, so we're at Halam Sheral and the Winter Palace again. There's Charter. Hi, Charter. Well met, your worship. Do I have anything to say? Uh, if I need to change or whatnot, I can do so here. Uh, since I'm not in Skyhold anymore, they did at least bring my wardrobe in, which is kind of nice, because now I can change. I think I might want to... This, this is much better. I feel more comfortable like this. Alright. Iron Bull and the last few years... Thank you for sending the Chargers to assist in dealing with the demons attacking Montfort. Their assistance was most appreciated, and many lives were saved. The Iron Bull and his Chargers have prevented another civil war from sweeping across Orlais with their efforts in Perindale. The Iron Bull in particular defeated the would-be usurper in combat. We must protest the actions of the Bull's Chargers in Southreach. While the presence of demons and Templars corrupted by Red Lyrium is undisputed, the necessity of your dwarven miner collapsing the better part of a mountain on the enemy forces was hardly necessary. <laughs> the Bull's Chargers were of great assistance in driving back the demons that attacked the shores of Lake Kalinhad. The elf who calls herself Dalish was particularly helpful, and I look forward to her promised explanation of how Dalish archery techniques can create walls of ice <laughs> or dispel magical barriers. <laughs> Excerpts from Letters of Thanks relating to the activities undertaken by Bull's Chargers over the past two years. So basically, Bull and his Chargers have continued to work for the Inquisition, just doing stuff, helping people, uh, stopping civil wars and whatnot, which is great. I like that. I, I'm really happy about that. Activity in the Winter Palace. Charter's notes are in an encryption she developed with Liana over the last couple of years. CM's intentions seem sincere. Agent is in agent in place at party tonight where CM is attending. VP left notes at drop as promised. Servant in green livery seen leaving guest wing of palace at odd hours. Possible tryst. Madame LV's second cousin is a bard in employ of Duke WM. Lord WG plans to meet Lady GD tonight. Neither of their spouses know. Lord R.W. plans to meet Lady S.R. tonight. Their spouses do know. Lord R.W.'s wife encouraged R.W. to step out with S.R. so she could have some peace and quiet to herself. Okay. Conduct becoming the Inquisition. To all members of the Inquisition, it has come to my attention that I must remind everyone of the type of behavior expected from us during this exalted council. It is natural to wish to hold our heads high, but remember that we are guests of the imperial court. It is upon us to behave with good grace, prop propriety, and restraint. If you are unsure of how to address someone of gentle birth, my lord or my lady will suffice. If you are fearful that you have overstepped an unknown protocol, speak with your commanders. If they are not available, seek me out. Over-imbibing is strongly discouraged at all times. If you were steered into an argument about the Inquisition's politics, politely excuse yourself as quickly as possible. Please do not engage in these debates. <laughs> if all else fails, trust sense and common courtesy to guide your actions. Sincerely, Lady Montelier. Ah, uh, Josephine. She's forever trying to help try to keep people civil. I don't know that it necessarily works. Oh, hey, Dorian. Dorian and the last few years. Inquisitor. It was good to hear from you, my friend. Oh, I'm so glad that we're friends. It always just makes me so happy in my heart to be friends with Dorian. For months, I've had only the society of Maveris's fledgling Lucerne party. Junior members of the Magisterium, so filled with fire and zeal and so wildly inept at politics, May keeps a bucket of ice water on hand in case one accidentally immolates himself. <laughs> Lest I give you the wrong impression, we are making progress, but it will take a great deal of skill to keep the Lucerne alive through the usual schedule of Minratha's scheming long enough to become a real political faction. Fortunately, they do have me. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that politics are plaguing you as well. It must be something going around, like a pestilence or an Orlesian fashion trend. <laughs> Hopefully Josephine can pre defuse the Ferelden outcry and persuade the Orlesians to stop circling you with a collar and leash. You know she did always love a challenge. 
I'll find an excuse to make a trip south soon. We should really catch up in person, don't you agree? Yes. Yes, I do agree. And I think we probably will be catching up with him uh, pretty soon. More dog treats. And here's our crafting area. Uh, if we need to. Um, I might make myself a couple of, of runes. Let's see. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, because I wanted to... Let's see here. I believe I have... Yeah, I have one. On here. I kind of wanted to put one on here. Yeah. And... That's okay, I think. Okay. And I wanted to, um... I think that should be enough to make another one. Perfect. Uh, Alright, good. So I am now going to, I think, use this one. Yes. And, okay. Alright. Good. Oh, that was all I needed to do. Um, for the moment, anyway. Ooh, another thing to loot. A pair of paddles. Okay. Okay. Cool. More doggy treats. A more of our hard and high town chapter. Amazing. Storms of temptation. This tattered novel bills itself as a sweeping romance on the eight seas by Danelle Mithril. The cover shows a dark-skinned elf with long platinum hair hanging by one hand from the mast of his ship, a dagger in his teeth. A woman in an elaborate mask, low-cut dress, and almost as much hair as the elf gasps up from the base of the mast. The elf is glaring at a tanned and chiseled human pirate, grinning as his vessel pulls alongside the elf's ship. For the first elven captain in the Antivan Navy, Kiel Zebulon's inaugural assignment was a routine trading mission down to Wycombe. Little did he know that the fiery Amethyst 
Coron, a passenger he picked up in the free marches, was heir to an enormous fortune, a fortune Ravani pirate Prince El Elrado Hurricane would do anything to get his hands on. Unable to resist Amethyst's plea for, pleas for help, Kiel found himself racing to get her back to Val Royale, even as the ferocious Hurricane per pursued them, and their passions ensured the eight seas would never be the same. There is a note scribbled on the inside cover in dainty handwriting. If found, please return to Lady Yvette Montelier. Well, that's cute. You know what? Everybody likes to, to read some trashy romances once in a while. Well, that's a... That's a adorable little village. Um, I enjoy a good romance now and then. Or even a bad romance. Bad romances are fun, too. All right, let's talk to Cassandra. Oh. Hi. You seem, uh... Is everything all right? A little bit weird. Yes. Well, I wanted to speak with you, and now you're here. Yeah? Should I not be here? Should I leave and come back later so you can try again? Always with clever suggestions. I try my best. Maybe you should sit. I can stand. Maybe I should sit. Okay. <laughs> Inquisitor, I want you to know that I am your friend. I will always be your friend. I'm glad. Oh, well, that's... So I hope to give you sound advice on this momentous day. Um, Do what is in your heart, my friend. No matter what anyone might tell you. Uh, thank you? That's a lovely sentiment, Cassandra. Marriage is much more than a Wh lovely sentiment, Inquisitor. <laughs> Marriage? Cullen is not hard on the eyes, I'll give him that. <laughs> but if you truly intend... You're not proposing to anyone. <laughs> I mean, I am going to kill Varric. Why do I believe everything he says? Oh God! Why? Um, uh, Varric told you that. <laughs> he said I was going to propose. He mentioned a proposal. I suppose I filled in the blanks. Oh. Or he did this on purpose. That dwarf gets entirely too much joy from my discomfort. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I will. I, uh... I might get married. I've thought about it. I suspected as much. Being Inquisitor has brought you good things. Many good things. But only a few have been by your choice. Take what happiness you can from those and do not let them go. That is all I meant to say. Advice from a friend for the days to come. That is actually some very good advice. I will give you that, Cassandra. But I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. She's probably thought about it. She's been with Colin for over two years now. Uh, her, you know, she's she and Colin are are doing good. They're they're in a good relationship. Um. So, you know, it's certainly possible that she's considered taking taking the next step in that. Just don't see why not. Um, so it's possible she's thought about it, but I don't know that anyone would actually know she's that. So Varric probably was just trolling Cassandra because she Nadia wouldn't have said anything to anybody about it, really. Uh, let's see here. Liliana and the last few years. Inquisitor. Thank you so much for your kind inquiries. I am doing very well, although I have been quite busy. Selecting new staff for my apartments at the Grand Cathedral has taken me so much has taken me so much longer than expected, and if you wouldn't mind, I would like to borrow Scout Harding for a few weeks to help me find more nugs. 
I cannot possibly hire anyone to a permanent position without first observing them in a room full of baby nugs, and all the litters I have on hand are nearly full grown. In any case, I will see you soon at Halamshiral. Until then, Liliana. I like her thing with nugs. That's so funny. Josephine in the last few years. Dear Inquisitor Trevelyan, Commander Cullen has reviewed the soldiers. I have written and received so many letters from the Orlesian court, our birds practically blot out the sun. We are as prepared for this exalted council as we will ever be. I know this past year has been full of formal meetings. Goodness knows I have attended many myself, but this one will truly test the alliances and friendships we have worked so hard to build. If I may offer you any advice, Inquisitor, it is this. Keep a ready smile, and remember we have their attention, because we are to be reckoned with. Respectfully yours, Ambassador Montelier. Yeah. <clears throat> also some very good advice from Josephine there. Cole and the last few years. Inquisitor. Your suggestion regarding the young man Cole was excellent. He displays an uncanny ability to locate missing people. When hostile forces held our agents and we feared they would be killed if we approached, Cole was able to reach them without being detected. While he has been less useful overall at extracting intelligence, I have learned to trust his instincts about whether a target is trustworthy or malicious. Per your request, I have limited his assistance to rescue operations or attacks on clearly hostile forces. Whatever magic lives in the young man's mind, it would be poorly served by the less pleasant necessities of our work. Yeah. His remarks about my family, while not germane to the mission at hand, were also greatly appreciated. Yours, Charter. Yeah, I feel like that's probably... good. Uh, Cole likes to help. <clears throat> A crumpled silk napkin. A crumpled silk napkin with some words inked in the corner. They're so smudged by wine stains, the only ones still readable are There was once a man from Hosburgh. <laughs> okay. Let's talk to Josephine. It's been quite a day so far, has it not? I've been speaking with representatives from everywhere. Have they given you trouble? Not at all. It is quite alarming. It means they are all saving themselves up for later. No, oh dear. Would you walk with me? I should like to take some air before the Exalted Council becomes inescapable. Okay. The palace has been most accommodating. We are, after all, here at their insistence. But the ministers may... No. No more talk of the Council. This meeting was to spend time with you in a more relaxed fashion. <laughs> um... You're still planning, I can see, I can and why tell. why can I still see those wheels turning in your head? <sighs> Work carries a certain momentum. Uh-huh. The truth is, there is a small entertainment happening tonight, to which I may be able to find a pair of invitations. You'd like me to go with you? Very much so. In all the years you've worked with Orlé, you had so little time to enjoy its culture. Well, okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Perhaps you're right. These meetings and talks don't allow for much leisure time. And then back to Skyhold without a moment's pause to take in where we are. With all that's been happening, I promised myself a single evening out. I'd very much like to go with a friend. What is this exactly? And what is this small entertainment? Something to ease our minds. I would very much like to surprise you with the details. Um, all right, sure. A mystery evening sounds fun. Why not? Josephine, I put myself in your capable hands. Splendid. I will arrange things at once. The past years have been so busy. We have earned at least a few moments of rest. Agreed. A calm night out sounds... <laughs> oh, bravo! <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> was the woman in gold playing a king? Who was the man in feathers? Oh, it's all very simple. The first actor's mask is determined by... Uh, well, I will lend you the program guide. <laughs> but tell me, did you enjoy the performance? Uh, yes. That was... 
One of the greatest things I've ever seen. Truly. That part with the glittery, and they actually set fire to... <laughs> yes, I truly enjoyed it. Then I call tonight a great success. Oh, look! The encore signal! <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad we had so much fun. I do hope you recover from your night at the opera. Any ear ringing should go away in a day or two. Okay, fair enough. Thanks, Josephine. That was lovely. I just, I like to please her. She's very fun to please. Can't imagine what these are for. Uh, more hard in high town. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I am saving Colin for last. Uh, but we can. Uh Talk to some other people in the meantime. <clears throat> I believe Vivian is, yeah. More hard in high town. Surprise, surprise. All right, Vivian. Darling, you made it. Excellent. <clears throat> I scheduled this appointment ages ago, and they do appreciate punctuality. Appointment? More stuff to do. With the Imperial do. Garden Spa, of course. Oh. You work so hard, my dear. I wanted to treat you. Spa day. Yay. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Of course it is, darling. That's the only kind I have. <laughs> Uh, tiny cheese wheels, of course. What are the cheese wheels for? It pains me that you even have to ask. You've clearly been living too long in barely civilized conditions. <laughs> Did you hear something? Relax, darling. It's spa day. <laughs> How have you been? It seems ages since we've spoken. How are things <clears throat> with our dear Commander Cullen? Oh, very good. Things are excellent. Thank you for asking. I'm glad to hear it. You've done so much, darling. You deserve to be happy. What in the hell is going on? Uh, what have you been up to? You must be keeping very busy. Someone has to keep the mess that's been made of Thedas' institutions of magic from flying apart. <laughs> Don't you feel better, my dear? This place really does work miracles. Oh yeah, spa day! What happened? Darling, it's spa day. Don't fret. You'll undo all the good they've done. <laughs> Come along, Inquisitor. They have other appointments, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Something happened and now there's a lot of hams sitting around here? No idea. Darling, what can I do for you? I'm I'm impressed by the number of hams that Sarah managed to to drop here. I I don't know how that happened exactly, but sure. All right, let's go up and talk to our friends from Orle and Ferelden. one. Ooh, another lookout. 
And, oh, look at that. That's a beautiful sight. Some other nice sights here, too. <laughs> Alright. Let's... I suppose we should, uh... We should talk to uh, Liliana, I mean, uh, Divine Victoria. Uh, Aniker Halfer, a diverse catalog of treasures. Billing itself as the most distinguished retailer of fine goods and novelties to the rich since 786 Storm, this booklet is filled with woodcuts of strange trinkets, the world's best articulated Everite backscratcher, complicated looking devices, the only triple-decker carriage with Orzammar designed wheel locks for smoother braking and specialty items. Be the first to enjoy the amazing cooling properties of Drake skin lining in one's evening mask. Must be here. A dispatch from the Crown of Ferelden. Uncle Tegan, I read your first letter. Trust Orlay to put up a fight about this now. You've been there before, so I'm not telling you anything new. Send a messenger if you need anything. I'll send someone out straight away. Regards, King Alistair Ferelden. Someone, presumably his majesty, has drawn a stick figure weighed down by an oversized crown at the bottom of the page. Oh, poor guy. He's not super happy to be the King of Ferelden, I know. Uh, anyway. Divine Victoria, am I interrupting? Of course not, Inquisitor. I was catching up with Redcliffe's Arl. Is here to represent Ferelden at the summit. Inquisitor, good to meet you. How's Redcliffe? How are things in Redcliffe, my lord? Blessedly quiet. The mayor conveys his greetings. Redcliffe remembers its savior. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I won't take much time, but I'll I... I'll try not to keep you from more important matters. Very well. We'll continue this later, your perfection. Many are frightened of the Inquisition's power, but I will do all I can to allay their fears. Uh, how can I help? Is there anything I can do to... Is there anything I can do to make your job easier? Yeah. <laughs> Explore the grounds. Let yourself be seen. The delegates need to put a face to the legend. I have much to do, but let me say this. I may no longer be your spy master, but I am always here if you require. Alright, cool. So now we can talk to Liliana a little more arrived, privately. Inquisitor. The Crown's anxious for news. And your thoughts on Ferelden's position? The breach is long gone, yet Skyhold's army remains. Ferelden can't continue to ignore soldiers on its borders. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I understand. Especially, I mean, you guys gotta remember, like, it's been within living memory that Ferelden was violently occupied by Orle, and, uh... The Inquisition is very closely allied with Orle and has been for a while. So, like, it makes perfect sense that 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 Arl Tegan and even King Alistair would be nervous about the Inquisition at this point. Especially because, yeah, like, it's two years later and we're still sitting around. I'm still sitting around with a giant army that is apparently doing... I mean, there's not really a war to fight anymore, so what's it doing there? So, yeah, I, like, I understand the fear. The Inquisition has grown. I can see how its presence might cause concern. Then you understand why we must demand a reduction of your military forces? A power without allegiance to either Ferelden or Orle? Even <laughs> I see neither of our countries can let it rest. I won't keep you longer. We'll have words enough when the Exalted Council begins. No doubt we will. No doubt we will. Um, yeah. And here's my friend Dorian, my good buddy. Orle is on your side, Lord Parvis. <clears throat> the Inquisition's support is not a thing to lose lightly. Which is why the Orlesian court is circling it with a net and collar? <laughs> Blunt as always, my friend. But you'll have to excuse me. I see an old friend I must greet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
Inquisitor, how long has it been? Don't actually tell me. I despise feeling old. <laughs> it's good to see you, my friend. It's good to see you, too. You arrived ahead of me. I hope all's well. It's everything I expected. We've been spared the burden of surprise. Yeah. Orle wants the Inquisition tamed, Ferelden wants it gone, the Chantry medals, and Tevinter sends but one ambassador. <laughs> so that's me, by the way. A reward for my interest in the South. Thankfully, Ambassador Pavis is a token appointment. Call on me as you like. Yay. Inquisitor. Duke Cyril Montfort, member of the Council of Heralds and Lord of Chateau Hain. Oh boy. I have long followed your work. It is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Is that sentiment shared by the rest of the court? <laughs> of course. Ole wishes only to offer respectful guidance to the Inquisition. Uh huh. I bet. And you disagree with them? Does your grace feel the Inquisition should continue to rule itself? I would rather see the Inquisition join us freely than be carved into pieces for the chessboard. I have not forgotten Justinia's death. I had friends who perished at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. More than the good you have done, it is a good we may do together I don't wish to lose. Whatever happens, Inquisitor, I wish you well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Scandalous gossip. This unsigned note is creased as if it had been secreted away in someone's pocket. Dearest Jay, I agree it is surprising that the Fereldans come as equals, but the Exalted Council is in the heart of Southern Orlay. That cannot be lost on our neighbors. Yeah. Dedication. This fountain was erected in commemoration of the end of the Civil War and the slaying of Corypheus by the Blessed Herald of Andraste, Inquisitor Nadia Trevelyan, in the 42nd year of the Dragon Age. Let the song of its water be as laughter. Let the cool of its stone be as memories gone. Caprice coins. A bag of Caprice coins. Discs minted for nobility to throw into fountains. They are stamped with a lion on one side and the Chantry's sunburst on the other. What's over here? A lacquered box. A lacquered box containing five pots of blush, three jars of lipstick, a small but sturdy hairbrush, and dozens of brightly jeweled hairpins and ribbons. A note affixed to the inside of the lid reads, A few supplies for emergencies, my petite. Love, Mama. All right. Always afraid to mingle. What are you doing? Okay. Sure. Anyway, hi Liliana. Will you walk with me? Uh, sure. The first time I came to the Winter Palace, I was only 18. I was dazzled. Such rich hangings, splendid marble columns, more golden lions than I could count. It's all still here, still bright, but I no longer see that same palace. You sound sad about that. And that makes you sad. It is easier on the heart to just see gilding. Now all I see are hands rub raw to make gold gleam, tears shed in the night over silk embroidery. Others overlook them and forget their pain, but I am divine and I cannot be blind. Someone's got to look out for the little guy. They seek to tear the Inquisition down. You feel it, no? Fear. Yeah, um... Yeah, I mean, we know a lot. We know too much. I'd fear anyone with our vault of secrets, wouldn't you? It is not our secrets, nor our soldiers. There have always been spy masters and private armies. They are afraid of nothing so much as the hand that directs it all. Mine. 
Already your actions have begun to reshape Thedas. Your influence is felt everywhere. It was only a matter of time before they moved. I'm surprised it took this long. The Inquisition's time is coming to an end. Um, I have to agree. The Inquisition has done enough, more than enough. Maybe it's time for us to lay down our swords and go home. We set out to restore peace. And now peace is upon us. You and I have come so far through the darkness together. It is time for us both to live in the light. But whatever you decide, I will be honored to stand beside you. Thanks, Liliana. I appreciate that. All right, let's go talk to Dorian. I'm gonna go around this way so I can gather up a couple more things Don't over here. Broken mask? What in the hell? A doggy treat. Here's uh, something else. More hard in high town. Oh, there's a lot of hard in high town. All right, let's talk to Dorian. He's waiting very patiently. Oh, there's one more thing over here. Silver ring. Okay. Hey, Dorian. As the most eloquent dwarf you know, Sparkles... Speech! Speech! Way too much speech. <laughs> Varric, there's really no need. What's going on? Inquisitor! You're just in time. Oh? Sparkles, the Imperium doesn't deserve you. Or wants you. It, it may even kill you. But <laughs> we'll miss you. If it counts. What? Missy, what? What are, you ta what are we talking about? And you didn't know. <laughs> no! What? What's going on? Okay, folks. Time to take the party elsewhere. Tama never wants a I swear. Leave him. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> what is going on, Dorian? It's true. When the Exalted Council has ended, I'm going back to Tabinta. For good, this time. Um. Okay, but I'll miss you. I will. I'll, I'll miss you a lot. I love you, Dorian. You're so good. You know I'll miss you. Naturally. <laughs> My father is dead. Oh. Assassinated, I believe. Shit. I received notice this morning. A perversely cheerful letter congratulating me on assuming his seat in the Magisterium. We only met a few times while I was home. He didn't say anything about keeping me as his heir. This ambassadorship, his doing, I'm told. He must have wanted me away when the trouble began. I have to go back. Oh, Christ, okay. Um... What'll you do there? So you'll truly be a Magister? Oh, yes. I can't wait to degrade the Magisterium with my presence. A new outfit is required. <laughs> and then what? I find my father's killers and kill them back. Oh, gosh. Then I find those giving to Vinter a bad name and kill them. They're most likely the same people. So that should make the job easier. You know I could help you. You'll need help. I could go with you. Not this time, my friend. Oh, come on. I be entirely without support. <sighs> Mayveris has gathered other magisters who feel as we do. 
we'll be an actual faction in the magisterium. I'll teach them manners, <laughs> take them shopping. It'll be fun. Um, I am sorry about your father. I know it was complicated, but I'm sorry about your father. Thank you. It still doesn't feel real. I know how that feels. Um, but yeah, what about what about Iron Bull? You two are still a thing, right? How does Bull feel about this? He wants to come with me. Oh. It can't happen, of course. Oh. A Canari cannot simply walk around the Imperium, even in the Magister's company. I don't want him hurt. He doesn't want me hurt. We're working it out. Well, those kinds of things uh, happen sometimes. Um, I'm sure you'll work it out. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't feel like... There's nothing to say, seems like... I don't know, that doesn't seem right. And I also don't want to tell him he doesn't have to do anything. He knows he doesn't have to do anything, but I appreciate the fact that he feels like he should, and I appreciate how much he's trying to do this, so I guess I wish you well. I wish you safe travels, and the best of luck. Oh, I'll need it, thank you. Magisters are tricksy bastards. Yeah? A present. A going away present. It's a sending crystal. Amazing what friendship with the Inquisition gives you access to. If I get in over my head, or you're overwhelmed with sorrow for lack of my velvety voice... Magic. What? You didn't think I would just leave and you'd never hear from me again, did you? I wish we could hug. You are my dearest friend. Oh, God damn it! Perhaps my only friend. <sighs> that will never change, no matter where we are. Fuck. Now let's finish the good wine before the others get back. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. You're crying. Shut up. God, that always gets me. Go to hell, Dorian. I mean, in this, I mean that in the best way possible. Go to hell. <laughs> oh, Dorian. All right, last one. While the gazebo is available for festive occasions, deposits are non-refundable in cases of flood, fire, or imperial whim. Book accordingly. <laughs> All right. All right. Here it is. Here we go. Uh, hello, my dear. You there. You're to dodge, not catch. <laughs> if that ball were a fireball, you'd be dead. <laughs> Oh, honey. You found a dog. <laughs> they don't breed Mabari in Olay. The merchant said he was abandoned. Perhaps his owner's tired of the novelty. But he's such a good dog. I'm tired of you. With that positive attitude and fetching ability. <laughs> he's not supposed to fetch it. He's a dog. I don't think you understand how this works. <laughs> Another Ferelden trapped at the Winter Palace. I couldn't leave him to that fate. <laughs> oh, Cullen. Besides, I think he likes me. I think he does, yes. <laughs> you know Mabari choose their masters, right, Cullen? It means you're worthy. <laughs> uh, no, you should show him Ferelden. You could take him to Ferelden sometime. You should know where he came from. I did promise my sister a visit. She might try to spoil you. Like two years ago you did. You report to. <laughs> The Inquisition will change after this. I'm not yet sure what that will mean. Me neither. Still, I've found certainty in my life now. The Council won't change that. Marry me. <laughs> what? I mean, will you... <laughs> oh, I had a plan, and... I wasn't a dog, but you were... <laughs> it doesn't matter. I've thought of little else, and I don't need a plan. Only to know if you would. Yes, of course, absolutely. I would. Cullen, I will. You will. People will notice the Inquisitor marrying her commander in the middle of the Exalted Council. It won't go over well. 
We know a few people who can keep things secret. <laughs> do we? <laughs> yes, we do. Just know, everything feels like it was worth fighting for. It was. This is... This is the part where you make a promise. Oh, <laughs> I swear unto the Maker and the Holy Andraste to love this woman the rest of my days. Yay! I have a husband and a dog now! <laughs> It's amazing! <laughs> and... <laughs> Alright! <laughs> I got them all. Excellent. What have you brought for me, buddy? Cudgel of the Golden Ebon Queen. Oh, nice. That's a wonderful mace. Look at that. On hit, chance to inflict bees on target. Amazing. Amazing. God bless you. There you are. I I just realized I'm greeting my wife. <laughs> I rather like this. I rather like it too, Colin. <laughs> Goodness. Demo. Oh yes. All right. I think we've probably done enough talking. Um. So we can probably begin the Exalted Council in the next episode. Uh, so yeah, we'll leave it here. As always, if you like what you see, please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Later!